but he's like, you know, you stayed in those resorts. I'm like, you know, I uh, know I didn't. I actually am really proud that I stayed out in the wild and I did it. I wasn't scared. Um, and, and a big trick too, is I always chose a spot by the water. It helps a lot to drown out any noises that would, but any bumps in the night that would definitely wake you up. It helps a lot. Now, you, even though you went by yourself, did you have other people or other contacts that were out there looking at the same time? Like, did you know other people that were looking? Not a soul. Really? Yeah, I didn't meet anybody out there that was looking. Um, I just wanted to not share that with anybody. That's kind of funny. Um I did not. I didn't want to share that with anybody. Um, I did. Like, I have a friend of mine that once I was going to get out of nursing school that we were going to go look for together. She's not a big backpacker. Are you there? Okay. Yeah. Um, she's not a big backpacker, um, but she was definitely in it to just have fun. And and me too. So, and it was always just about having fun anyways. Um, and, you know, basically finding the treasure was a bonus. And then I always told my friend, then writing the book is the super bonus. The money just keeps coming in. So <laughs> definitely had that have plan. You, have you thought about writing down your experiences and actually, you know, trying to publish something? Or do you think it's not worth it since you didn't find the treasure? Oh, I think it's worth it. I think... I think anybody that's into hiking and backpacking and it gets people out there, it's worth it. I have a lot of friends actually that will be very disappointed if I do not write a, a book about it. Um, they're, they're always encouraging me to, to write it and cause they love hearing it when I, when I come back and most of my girlfriends just can't believe that I do this and I do it by myself 99% of the time. Um, yeah. So I'm always encouraged to write a book. I just, uh, I've been a little sidetracked with, with school at this moment. Once I get out, then I will. Cause sure. then there'll be more hikes, but I mean, the experiences are amazing. You learn so much about yourself and you learn so many people out there too. I mean, I don't know anybody's names when I was out there. I don't remember them except for like Ranger Bob. He definitely hit a warm spot in my heart because I talked to him a few times and I know I definitely got on his nerves a lot um, <laughs> going over maps with him. Well, let's check this site out. Um, but I mean, just fun people out there. And it was really, it's, it's just great to see people going to the national parks too. Um, it's, it's like discovering America. I, I think most people really haven't been outside that much in America, people are always wanting to go to another country. And I always keep saying, there are so many sites in this country. I'm like, and if you've ever gone to Glacier, hands down, I don't think there's any place in the world that's prettier than it. It's, I mean, it's, it's breathtaking. It puts tears in your eyes. That so, was the yeah. first uh, national park my wife and I stayed at whenever we first started vacationing. We're like, okay, where are we going to go? And we found uh, Apgar Village and we stayed right on Lake McDonald. Yeah. And uh, I, I'm right there with you. It was absolutely, I've never been able to really describe it fully. It's, it's, yeah, it's, it's hard to describe. Um, I went out there with my, my son and my youngest daughter and I'm telling you, it was like, it's kind of fun. I remember when I went to Glacier and it was just gorgeous and we'd stayed in St. Mary's and I've never, I'd driven in the mountains going east to the Appalachian and I didn't like it back when I was younger. But when we went out West, that really like caught my nerves a lot and driving in the mountains, I'm not very good at it. I'm like, Oh God, we're going to die. We're going to die. <laughs> and my, and my son was, you know, he's, he's a very religious person and he would always say, well, just trust in God, mom, your car's going to get you there. And I just want to like punch his lights out. It's like, <laughs> and he's like, hold on to like the steering wheel. And he's like, yeah, it's not going to go anywhere. I'm like, it is, trust me. So it's, it's been, it's very funny that I, I still go West. Um, and I just went out there to California to see him before I got deployed. And I was in the mountains again. And I'm like, why do I do this to myself? I, want to <laughs> <it>. I love it. <laughs> well, it's so funny because uh, I'm from the Ohio river Valley and you know, they call it the little smokies. There's some Hills and stuff there. My family loves going to the Smokies. They, you know, that's the mountains to them. But being out in the Rockies is completely different. Oh. And 
Yeah. I couldn't explain it to them until they seen it. They came out and visited with us uh, earlier this spring. And uh, after they seen it, I think it kind of opened their eyes a little bit like, oh, this is out here. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's it's amazing. So when we went to Glacier, that was, you know, we had stopped in South Dakota and we saw, you know, Mount Rushmore. And I'm a big advocate for for Native Americans and, and awareness and stopped at all the reservations. And my son's like watching me just kind of do these things as we went through like Pine Ridge. Um, and we went, you know, as we kept going and we went to like Devil's, you know, Devil's Tower and kept heading and we went to Crow's Nation and going up to a Glacier. And that trip was amazing. And we had gone to all the battle sites that you could go. And then the next year, that was the year that I found out about the treasure headed west to California because we were going to go through the Grand Canyon and do Redwood. And then we were going to go up to Crater Lake and go all the way up to Wyoming or up to Washington. And we were going to go to Olympic National Forest up there and do like a try to get to like Mount Olympic up there. Yeah. Um, and we didn't make it up there because he wanted to cut early. So we went through um, – God, we went through the Cascade Mountains, and I, I thought I was going to die at some points. Like, I definitely learned that I'm afraid of heights driving, but I can do it when I'm hiking. It's very kind of strange for everyone when I explain this to people. But we had, on that trip, I mean, we had gone through parts of the Rocky Mountains, and then we went through the Sierras, and then on our way back, we had to go through the Cascades, and then we went back to the Rockies, and I thought, I have had so many mountains, and there were times, like, I think I was so white that I was, I had to take Benadryl sometimes driving, um, <laughs> and uh, there was one Vista in California, though, it was, we were coming out of uh, the Trinity area. And you just kept going up this mountain. I'm like, I'm sure this car is going to flip over backwards. How do we keep going this straight up a hill? And like you get to the top and it's this beautiful vista. I mean, it's gorgeous. And I had to like get out of the car on my hands and knees. Like I thought the world was going to fall off. Like we were going to fall off the, the, the face of the earth. It was the weirdest thing. And my son's like, what is wrong with you? I'm like, I am so high up. This is so weird. But... <laughs> And then the next year I went out to Wyoming and I didn't have that, I have that problem at all driving out. And everyone was like, wow, you went through the mountains because uh, I went through the east side of Yellowstone, which yeah. I would have to say going down it was beautiful. If I would have had to come up it, there would have been some people behind me very upset because I would have probably only been going about five miles per hour. Um, <laughs> I would have been on the cliff side and that would have done me in. <laughs> so, so I... Yeah, when I left out of Yellowstone, though, I went out the west side up the Gallatin, and that was gorgeous. Oh, my God. Like, you get the big sky, Montana. It's just such a big area, and that was the fun part about it with this treasure. I'm like, man, I was just in Yellowstone, but honestly, it could be here, and it could be there. I'm like, I, it made me reevaluate researching the maps, and I had a few more spots picked out from when I got out of there. It was going to be a whole summer of searching for this once I got out of nursing school. Um yeah, someone beat me to it. Well, I'll tell you what. I, I, I don't want to keep you on. I could probably talk to you all night, but I'm, I'm going to cut it short if that's okay with you, unless there's anything else you want. Um, before we stop talking, though, even though you didn't find the treasure, was there something else that you came away with after the whole ordeal was over? Absolutely. Um, this is something that I've told only a few of my friends because I do solo hike. Um, and it was something on my first night when I found the Milky Way. Not found it, like I found it, but I opened yeah. my eyes and here's this Milky Way. And I'm looking at this and like, like it was an instant reaction. Like I went to nudge somebody next to me because I wanted them to see the same thing I was seeing. I wanted to share that with somebody and I was like, oh yeah, you're by yourself. And so it really made me look inside about sharing these experiences. I mean, it's one thing to share them and tell the story, but to be with somebody else and share it, it definitely changed some of my perspective of, you know, like happiness is only real and shared. And I thought about that. Like that was a big phrase at the very end of Into the Wild that Chris McCandless had wrote in his book. And I thought, man, that hit home so hard. Because I was like, that was the first time in my life I'd ever felt lonely. That's very interesting. That's an interesting takeaway. 
it, it was, and it was, it's, it was something like I had never ever felt lonely in my life, and in that moment I did. And you know, I went the next day and I went all over the place and talked to people, but it was something that I truly wish I could have shared that with somebody. That is definitely the takeaway. Fantastic, Jessica. Listen, thank you very much for even responding to me asking you if you want to talk. I love uh, talking. It was a fun time. It really was. I, I hate it that no one else can go out there and search for it because it has been found. But I do pray in the back of my mind somebody goes out there and does it again because it was fun. If, if you love Goonies and if you love a good challenge, that was great. That was just fun. I know. I get excited finding the painted rocks that people hide, so I couldn't imagine finding the treasure, how that person felt. <laughs> I wish. I I, I only wish that he could come on TV with a mask on his face and his voice altered and hear their story. I, I would love that. That would be so amazing to hear that. Yeah, it would. Anytime you ever want to talk about your treasure hunt again, if there's anything we missed that you want to talk about, feel free to contact me. We'll do another episode or, or if there's another hike. If you get to do the PCT, let yeah, me know. Definitely. Absolutely. Uh, and then once you write your book, come back and we'll, we'll uh, go ahead and promote that too. Uh, it sounds like a plan. It was very nice meeting you. Absolutely. Thanks, Jessica. You're welcome. Bye-bye. Bye. Jessica for sharing her story with us. Uh, I know that her quest meant a lot to her, and for her to share it with us, uh, I felt I felt really honored to be able to speak to her about it. Also, I'd like to thank my good friend T. R. Beery for making the original intro music for the Twelve Hike Podcast. Uh, he he did me a big solid there. I didn't pay. Him, but I promise to uh, let him sleep in my basement and give him a bunch of beer when he gets here. I'm sure he's going to visit sometime, so uh, I guess he'll uh, he'll get his pay that way. Uh, for more information on the 12 Hike podcast, be sure to visit our Facebook page, uh, 12 Hike, and we also have an Instagram, the 12 Hike Challenge. Original outro music is by Alex Benz. He is a, a fellow... 12 hike follower and he was gracious enough to let us use a couple of his songs uh, throughout the podcast Uh, so big shout out to him Uh, and if you'd like more information about him just send us a message 